OK. Well, you may as well. Get up there, what? Uh, okay, uh, don't forget. Where's my? Ah. Don't forget to hit record, uh, Rob. So that yep, I've I've hit record and uh, I've got the screen up. Excellent. Hopefully. Yep, I'm seeing uh, the differential and now the QR code again. Yep. Okay, so as per usual, just to, to let you guys know that it is perfectly safe to uh, 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 look at that QR code and and uh, capture it and and uh, whatever to get all my details. Um, absolutely perfectly safe. There is no danger at all, uh, and you can rely on that. Bearing in mind that I got my start as a malware researcher, and I know every single way of fooling people to install malware on their machines. Uh, however, <laughs> anyways, yes, this is. Uh, VSS 5 today on homomorphic encryption. Uh, but just to uh, give people uh, next, uh, well, I guess two weeks from now, next Fortnite's uh, presentation, that'll be on differential privacy on April 20th uh, at uh, 7 p.m. Pacific time, in case anybody's calling in from a different time zone. And the uh, uh, the top one, uh, HTTPS uh, is.gd slash lowercase c. I think that's a zero, capital T, capital U, lowercase d, capital M. Uh, that is the, uh, the link for uh, the April 20th meeting. Uh, in case you want details there on the Van Tug security series, uh, what's coming up, how to get the uh, uh, the past meetings and, and stuff like that. Um, there again at uh, ISGD, uh, capital J, capital O, uh, digit five, lowercase n, lowercase w, capital Z, or Z if there's any Americans in the audience. And um, uh, we've got some videos up. I put them on my channel uh, from some of the previous meetings still haven't got the first one, but um, uh, the videos are there on my my YouTube channel. Uh, if you want to go and look at uh, the past ones, uh, we've got all three parts of the security lessons from COVID-19 running there. So. Uh, homomorphic encryption. Um, now, uh, homomorphic encryption is is uh, encrypting something and then still using it while it's while it's still encrypted. Now, um, of course, this isn't as uh, silly as uh, just doing the little uh, rot thirteen that I've done here, or uh, well, the QR code itself, in, in a sense, is a, a form of encrypting the message. Uh, but that's not really what we're talking about here. And by the way, if you want to know how, what that decrypts to, uh, the information about me, um, there we go. Um, but that's that's not really what we're talking about with, with homomorphic encryption. Um, Homomorphic encryption is encrypting the data and still being able to use it for something without decrypting it. So if you wanted to, you know, I, I did the, the ROT 13, I did the QR code uh, for my information, but if you wanted to read those, you, you are going to have to decrypt them. Homomorphic encryption is keeping the data encrypted and still being able to use it. Um, without doing any intervening decryption step. Uh, so uh, can we we do that? Well, uh, a lot of people think we can. Um, IBM, uh, for one, has been pushing it. Microsoft has has sort of been pushing it. 
Um, the uh, well, the CSE people. Uh, they, as I was making up the uh, uh, the slides for this, and that, that was actually earlier last year. Um, the CSE was working on what they referred to as the holy grail of encryption, and I think that's basically pushing it a bit too far. Um, and and particularly when they said that, a quote out of the actual article there, uh, where the guy said that um, they're teaming up with industry and academics to work out uh, homomorphic encryption could function in a Canadian setting. And I, you know, when I hear these kinds of things, you know, um, uh, use it in a Canadian setting, um, IT in, uh, you know, a racially diverse environment and, and stuff like that. Now, I know that there is racial bias in, in some of these things. I, I have seen the, the video about um, uh, Hewlett Packard uh, laptops uh, being, uh, uh, racially prejudiced and, and discriminatory that uh, HP had a thing where, uh, you know, sort of an artificial intelligence thing where it would follow your uh, your face. If you if you moved around the laptop, the the uh, camera would in fact follow you and focus on you. Um, and it, except that it would do that if you were white and and a, a black coworker and a, and a white co-worker demonstrated this quite effectively and um, you can you can go and look that up I think you know the uh, look up something about the HP computers being racist on on YouTube and you'll probably be able to find that um, but I don't think homomorphic encryption is one of the things that you can say is is going to be subject to racial or uh, cultural bias in any way. I mean, you know, this is this is mathematics, really. Uh, you know, you, you can't fool around with numbers on, in, you know, culturally insensitive ways. You can only fool around with numbers in terms of misleading people. So I thought that was a, a pretty odd thing. Now, the thing is that homomorphic encryption, this is the latest thing. This is one of the new buzzwords, homomorphic encryption. This is, you know, uh, something that's that's going to change the world. You know, as they say, the holy grail of encryption. Well, horse feathers, this is not new. The idea is not new. We have, in fact, been using homomorphic encryption for literally decades. Uh, anybody want to unmute themselves and have a guess at what we use it for? Hash. Absolutely, 100% password hashing. When we are storing passwords, basically the only way we store passwords is hashing them and, and storing them in a hashed form. Now, that is exactly what I said, that you know we encrypt the password, we use, um, uh, you know, it, it's it's not a keyed uh, encryption system. It's it's just a hash function, but it, it makes a digest. The password is unrecoverable. And yes, I know all about rainbow tables and dictionary attacks and that sort of thing. But basically, um, you can never know that you have, in fact, got the original password. You may find something that matches, but you don't know if you have the original uh, password um, and you can't know. Um, but yes, um, we we store the hash value, the the digest. We do not store the actual password, so we have it in an encrypted form, and we use it in an encrypted form because when somebody submits their password, we hash that and we compare the hash values. We compare the digests there. So that means that we can do. Uh, exactly what I described. We can encrypt something and then we can still use it even in an encrypted form. We don't have to decrypt it in order to uh, perform the function that we want. Now, exact search, which you know um, basically is, is what we're doing uh, with that, 
can be done in a number of other ways too. Uh, that, now, this is not a great example. This is a pretty bad example, but electronic code book modes of block ciphers are the, the weakest form um, because if you take um, any uh, plain text that is the same as, as other plain text, then um, the cipher text is going to be the same as well. And so as long as the block size is, is the exact size of the record that you're looking for, you can do a search for a record just by searching on the cipher text. And so electronic code book mode of block cipher will allow you to do that. Have we got a, a question from our guest there? OK. Um, sorry. It, Okay, I did not get any of that. Your uh, whatever's happening with your microphone, it's it's way too. Yeah, they just unmuted themselves. It sounds like so I just remuted them so we could carry on. Okay. Uh, I suppose if he wants to ask a question, he could ask it in the in the chat function in the conversation. Um, anyway, uh, so uh, the electronic code book mode of block cipher, as I say, you you do have this exact search uh, capability, and and here's a this is a graphical demonstration of why ECB is the the weakest mode. Um, if you use ECB on a, a fairly simple image, um, you can actually tell, you know, as long as it's a fairly simple image, um, what the image actually is, what the picture is, even when it's encrypted. But uh, that's <clears throat> not necessarily something that I would suggest as a, a particular use for homomorphic encryption. You, you do tend to lose a, a fair amount of the detail. But it might be possible. Anyway, uh, on to uh, the well, the exact search. As I say, electronic codebook mode of the block cipher. Again, it's it's exactly the same type of function as we see with the password hashing. Um, we can also do some sorting function. Uh, for example, uh, the Caesar cipher. Um, you know, for example, uh, the ROT13 that I did uh, earlier. Um, depending on how much of a, a difference you're doing, I mean, the original Caesar cipher was specifically just moving down three spaces in the alphabet where ROT13 is moving down 13 spaces. So um, if, you're, if you're not doing too much there or um, in any mod function, you are going to have a limited sorting capability even with the encrypted data. Uh, so for example, you, you get uh, something encrypted in C Caesar cipher. Um, you can sort that and um, you will come out uh, sort of in, in a sort, you know, close to a sorted uh, situation. It's not gonna be completely random. So uh, again, you know, you've got this kind of function um, in some of these weaker uh, algorithms, encryption algorithms. Uh, but as I say, you know, these are these are bad examples. Um, uh, COVID-19 contact tracing with the good old uh, DP3T protocol, which just about everybody is is using. Now there's, I mean, the, the contact tracing apps um, uh, everywhere that they have been used um they seem to have pretty much failed um so again you know not a, a great example here but um basically this protocol uses random data as the beacon and this contains no personally identifiable information now that's as long as you're only collecting 
the, the data beacons. Um, if in fact you start collecting information, uh, even about times, certainly about location where these, these beacons were collected, um, all of a sudden, very quickly, you start to get into a situation where the, the data can, in fact, start to be de-anonymized. And, and as you build larger and larger bundles of, of data there, um, anything you're adding to that random data um, can start to, to betray uh, some information. So um, that is, you know, definitely something to, to watch out for. But as long as we're just using the random data, the, the beacons, um, then we should be okay. Now, um, okay, on to a better example. Uh, Revastin, yes, that is Ron Revest, that is the R in RSA, has proposed a three ballot voting system. And this is this is really interesting. This is something that I, I like a lot, particularly I have uh, I have worked as a poll clerk and a deputy returning officer in Canadian federal elections. So I know uh, all about paper voting, uh, paper ballots and all that kind of stuff. Now, paper ballots really only give you the anonymity you know, the secret ballot situation. But there's an awful lot of things they don't do. Now, the, the process of voter registration, uh, the process of um, checking against voter registration for uh, voting and, and those types of things, all of them do add some additional layers of protection. Um, they prevent uh, duplicate voting, multiple votes uh, being cast by one person to to a pretty large extent. I mean, you know, we, we all know that the uh, cries of fraud in, in the recent election in the United States are, are you know, complete and utter garbage. Um, but even there, um, there are a number of things that uh, paper ballots just don't do. And the reverse three ballot voting system, this this protocol is a really, really interesting one. Now, um, you've got there, uh, by the way, I have um, pumped into the chat uh, all the uh, URLs, so you don't have to worry about, you know, taking pictures of the, uh, the screen, although, you know, don't worry if you want to do that, that's fine. But, um, uh, you know, if you want to go and look up the, the Wikipedia link there for the three ballot system, um, it's, it's there in, in the chat. So, and, and all the other URLs and, and a bit more besides. So, um, anyways, this is a system which can be implemented either on paper or digitally. So it's, you know, it's, it's very interesting. It can be used. Uh, I think for the first time to look at um, an online voting system or, or you know, different types of machine voting. Um, but certainly, um, even in the paper implementation, it adds additional functions to uh, paper ballot voting. Um, now, it's it's anonymous. Well, we already had that, but it. Uh, it provides for non-repudiation of voting. Now, again, the process of voting, uh, paper voting, um, does generally do that, but not the ballot itself. Now you've got non-repudiation on the ballot itself, and it gives you something that hasn't been available up until now, and that's verification to the voter that their vote was counted. This is very interesting. As I say, it can even be implemented in paper. In a three ballot voting system on paper, you actually get three ballots, three ballots attached to each other. You choose, you vote on the ballots. Um, you then choose which of the three ballots you put in the ballot box and that ballot gets counted. You take the two remaining ballots away with you 
and you can then use those to verify whether or not your ballot was in fact counted in, in the ballot counting. Um, now the ballots are counted and, and the election determined without the the ballot having to be decrypted in a sense. And so there is there is nothing there that can come back and identify uh, the voter. So again, it's it's anonymous. Um, but it you know it gives you these additional functions. And this is this is great. As I say, you know, we we get additional uh, safety, uh, reliability and um, accountability in the voting process um, even if we maintain a, a paper ballot system. Now the uh, the the digital implementation um, is the first time that I've ever seen something that could reasonably be done uh, for an online voting system. And and this has been, you know, people have been looking at online voting systems for decades, and it's always been a really terrible idea. I think one of the most recent things uh, that I saw was somebody saying that they were going to provide some kind of voting system that used blockchain. And I mean, you know, honest to goodness, I'm going to get a t-shirt that says blockchain is not the answer because it's just, you know, it doesn't, help with with any of the problems that we've had. Um, online voting has been a disaster. All the th ways that have been implemented have had all kinds of problems with them. And with the the three ballot voting system protocol, algorithm, whatever you want to call it, I, for the first time I see something that might be able to be used in uh, some kind of implementation. By the way, Microsoft um, seems to agree with me uh, Microsoft is uh, starting to promote something called Election Guard, and there's not an awful lot of detail that I've been able to find about it, but uh, what I have been able to find um, does seem that it, it uses the, the three ballot protocol. So uh, anyways, it's, it's really interesting, and, and I would say that this is um, definitely one of the applications uh, that homomorphic encryption uh, could be a real winner. So, um, now more recently though, people have been trying for uh, additional functions for homomorphic encryption. Um, you need to find algorithms, you need to find functions um, that will encrypt but maintain the the function, the feature, the the operation that you want to perform. So, for example, addition and multiplication, and as we'll see in the next slide, uh, there are uh, you know various people who are looking at uh, addition and, and multiplication on encrypt homomorphic encrypted data. So this. Uh, formula, this, this equation, demonstrates the associative and commutative principles in addition and multiplication, which addition and multiplication really share. So any function that will fit in that equation might be the basis for a solution for homomorphic encryption. So that uh, hopefully uh, might be something that we can pursue. And, and as I say, uh, these guys uh, now, um, IBM um, and, and there you can see it's all on GitHub. You can go, you can look at the code, you can play around with it. IBM uh, has been working on addition and multiplication. Microsoft with their seal function, uh, again, addition and multiplication. Google, uh, interestingly, looking at comparison. Again, we looked at that exact match comparisons and limited addition. 
uh, with something called private join and compute. Now, uh, the last URL there, homomorphicencryption.org, uh, which is fairly simple to remember, um, and uh, the introduction there has uh, a list, um, a much more extensive list, of different projects, uh, different algorithms that are being proposed for different functions. So if you want to go and see what people are working on, that's the that's the place to start. Uh, that's that's where to go and get it. And again, um, these uh, most of these are in the uh, the URLs that I pumped into the chat. So now, uh, okay, we have uh, uh, gotten to this point, and and uh, possibly this is uh, time for a break. Any questions so far? We can. Do you? Hello. Hi, Rob. Hello. It's Vern. Hello, Vern. Sorry, it took me a while to find the link. I got onto your uh, <laughs> your Twitter feed and managed to find the correct link for tonight's <laughs> meeting. So yes, if that works. That. Um, so would you have any um, insight into the recent changes that Georgia has made? Although I have my doubts they're anywhere near the three ballot system. They're probably going the opposite direction. Yeah. Um, Georgia, um, actually, the, the law that was passed is, is a real grab bag. There are some things um, in that law, some provisions that are actually um, strengthening uh, people's ability to vote. But most of the stuff that's uh, been done there um, is simply uh well some of it's absolute total garbage but most of it is um just simply trying to make it harder to vote and and of course this is because the republicans are in the majority in the georgia senate the republicans know very well and i mean this is demonstrated over and over again republicans will vote tend to vote even if it's difficult democrats tend to give up if you make it harder to vote. And so uh, most of the provisions in this Georgia package are simply ways to make it more annoying, more difficult, harder, more expensive um, to, uh, to register to vote and to actually vote. You know, right down to the, the thing about um, uh, not, you know, making it illegal to give people food or water if they're waiting in line to vote. Now, again, as I say, it's a mixed bag because that food and water thing was added to a provision making it illegal to give people money to vote. So, you know, some of these things are in fact legitimate. Some of them are trying to prevent people from buying votes or, or whatever. But uh, again, an awful lot of them are just just trying to make it harder. And, and I, you know, as I say, uh, the Republicans know if they can make it harder to vote, um, their share of the vote does tend to go up. And unfortunately, Georgia is only the, you know, first past the post with this. I believe that um, there's there's over a hundred uh, different proposals being made. I, I, I think it may be in the multiple hundreds um, in 43 different states uh, trying to do similar things, trying to make it harder to vote, trying to make um, you know voter registration more difficult, trying to uh, cut down on uh, ballot drop boxes. Um, again, in, in Georgia, it's it's limited uh, the the availability of ballot drop boxes, but it has also guaranteed that there have to be ballot drop boxes. So it's it's a real mixed bag. Um, so the the Georgia uh, state laws, it's hard to say anything singular about it, except that it's a it's a mess. Um, it definitely needs some work. And no, it's got absolutely nothing to do with homomorphic encryption. I, I'd be surprised if it did, 
if it's run by the Republicans. <laughs> yes, you you are correct. <laughs> yeah. Any, who's all on, any who's all on the, yeah, who's all on the meeting tonight? I see there's three I can see here. Yeah, I I don't know if we've have we still got Ray or I know that Ray left the chat, but uh You know Ray. That's that. Yeah, uh, Vern. That's that's Ray Kaplan from from Deacus Symposium days. I was gonna say Ray Kaplan, the Ray Kaplan, the Ray Kaplan. Oh yeah. my gosh! Wow. So he was on here briefly, but uh, I don't know. He possibly seems to have left us. Huh, Ray Cap? So is he in the area? Like, does he live no, out here? No, he's in he's in Arizona. But oh, I, I wow. Could, uh, I promoted this uh, particular meeting a, a little bit more widely. Well, I'm glad you did because we don't seem to be doing it. <laughs> well, Oops, was that was that was an inside that. voice. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I should looking at the why you're talking there. I was looking at the three ballot on the Wikipedia uh, link you gave us, so I'll have to read that. What that's all about. And yeah. then I also got the the fact check about the Georgia election, and that, of course this goes on and on and on. Of course, it's written by reporters. So um, I'd have to kind of like really read between the lines to see what it really meant. So I'm glad you actually summed it up somewhat. Thanks. I probably don't need yeah. to make, give myself a headache looking at this stuff the reporters uh, wrote up. Yeah, well, I tried to I I tried to chase it down, and and um, I mean, you probably have to go and get a copy of the law and and, <sighs> and read it line by line. And as I said, you know, some of the provisions are good. Um, some of them were. Uh, already prepared, ready to go, and then you know a bunch of the Republican senators just threw a whole bunch of extra stuff into it at the last second, and and you know bulldozed it through uh, the Georgia Senate. Yeah. It's it's going to be interesting. Um, the the fact that various commercial enterprises, Major League Baseball being one, uh, you know Delta and and Coke. Um, uh, Coca-Cola, rather, being uh, others, um, have, you know, taken stands and, and said, you know, this is a bad law uh, because their headquarters are, are in Georgia, or, well, in, in the case of baseball, of course, it wasn't their headquarters, but the all-star game was to have been played in Georgia, and now it's not because of this law. Uh, and it's really interesting. One of the very interesting parts of that is that um, uh, Mitch I see, McConnell. Yeah, yeah, I see McConnell basically said, you guys start doing this. We're going to basically make it hard on you or something. I don't know what he's going to do, but uh, yeah, he's, well, he's it, saber rattling. It, it's, it's also interesting in that um, prior to this, he was a big fan of businesses getting involved in politics. And he passed a bill making it easier for businesses and companies to contribute money to political parties and individuals and, and that sort of thing because he thought it was going to work. And now he's saying how democratic you know, of him. Yeah. Companies should not be involved in the political process. So, you know, interesting stuff. What a strange country that is. Oh, well. Okay, no, no particular other questions so far. This is this. It's too bad, and it's too bad that we we didn't have more people tonight because uh, uh, this is not one of the uh, the longer and more detailed uh, pieces of technology that I'm going to be dealing with. But anyways, on we go. I suppose. Uh, now, sorry. It can always go shorter if needed. I can always go shorter. Yeah, I can always do that. Anyway, um, homomorphic isn't a thing, a single thing. Um, there's different functions and there's different implementations. So this is this is not a singular thing. This is a whole field of endeavor, sort of like asymmetric encryption. Um, it, it, it reminds me very much of blockchain, which I've already mentioned. And uh, 
blockchain is not a single thing in it. You know, blockchain is basically a combination of a distributed database and uh, uh, digital signature certifications. Um, and actually, I'm working on, and, and we probably will in a few weeks get a, a presentation on NFTs and, and cryptocurrencies and stuff like that. Uh, so I'll, I'll go into more detail on, on blockchain when we get there. But blockchain is not a single thing. It's, it's this combination, and how you implement it um, has a lot to do with how it, it works and what weaknesses it has. Uh, homomorphic encryption is also not universal. You have to choose your function. You have to choose your function in advance. What you want to do with the data, what operations you want to perform on the data is, well, it, it determines how you encrypt the data in the first place. And so you you have to choose that in advance. It's not sort of um, you do homomorphic encryption on it and it's encrypted and then you can use different ways of, of pulling different types of answers and, and doing different types of operations on it. No, it doesn't work that way. You have to choose your function and that determines how you are going to encrypt the data in the first place. So, Uh, now, we're, well, we're going to get into crypto here, um, and uh, hopefully you know what I uh, mean when I say symmetric versus asymmetric. Um, symmetric encryption is our old standard uh, substitutions and permutations and combinations of substitutions and permutations and that sort of thing. Asymmetric encryption was the biggest advance in encryption in like 4,000 years and it was only invented in 1970. Um, and well, I mean, OK, uh, symmetric encryption, um, you you have to use the same key to encrypt and decrypt. Um, you use a single key, it has to be shared between the uh, transmitter and the receiver, and that's got to be done out of band because, you know, if you had a secure channel, um, why do you need encryption in the first place and, and all that kind of stuff. So uh, we know how strong symmetric encryption is. And, um, uh, you know, by the way, do not worry about uh, quantum computers breaking uh, symmetric encryption. Nobody has figured out how to do that yet. Uh, the only way is is the asymmetric, the the attacks using quantum computers. When we get quantum computers, and again, we'll talk about that when we get to quantum computers, is um, in regard to uh, uh, you know we we know how long that's going to take. We know how long you can keep the data. Um, it, it's it's strong and you know it's it's good, but symmetric encryption gives a a, a big problem with key management. We've got to be able to share the key. Now, asymmetric encryption is not as strong, and as I say, you know uh, there there are these theoretical attacks that could be mounted with quantum computers against asymmetric encryption specifically. Um, but the key management problem just vanishes into thin air because we've got the private key, which is private. You never have to share it with anybody. And the public key, which you can publish in the phone book if you want, or put it on billboards or you know whatever. The only problem that uh, we have remaining with key management there is just proving that yes, this is your public key, and there's there's ways and means of doing that, but you know that's that's for a crypto session. By the way, you can come along to my course on the CISSP at the beginning of May. Uh, yeah, contact the New York Institute of Technology and that sort of thing, and we, we're going to talk all about this. But um, so what we do these days is we use hybrid encryption. 
um, we do the encryption of our bulk data with the symmetric encryption. That's that's fast. It's strong. You know, it's it's fine. And then the only thing we do with asymmetric encryption is transmit the key. So you know, uh, we can we can use you know heavy duty asymmetric encryption with all its attendant extra processing demand uh, but just use it for the key and and the key itself that's a small piece of data and that sort of thing the bulk data is encrypted with the symmetric encryption and and as long as we manage the key with the asymmetric we're good so you know this is this is great you know we we use the different types for uh, the the areas where they they're best suited the symmetric for the bulk data, the asymmetric for encrypting the, the tiny piece of data that is the key. Everybody's happy. OK, why can't we do this with homomorphic encryption? Well, we can't, period. I mean, you know, I, I, as I just said, you have to decide what the function is, and that determines how you encrypt the data. And the, the key is is not an issue here um we're not uh necessarily you know we we don't want to decrypt it so um you know that's that's not an issue so so you know transmitting a key is is not a problem here we're working directly with the encrypted data and the encrypted data has to be done with homomorphic encryption and by the way homomorphic encryption is really complex um you've got these complex algorithms you have to do an awful lot of mathematical processing to ensure that your uh your original data even when it's encrypted maintains the the same form uh fulfills the same functions that we determined in the first place so we we can't avoid we can't do the hybrid trick here and this is going to require a lot of processing time. There's going to be a lot of CPU cycles that are chewed up when you start to use homomorphic encryption. So that is, uh, you know, definitely an area that we need to to consider. And there are further weaknesses here. One is there's limited algorithms. Like I said, you, you go to that site, you can look at you know, all of them, um, and you'll see over and over again, you know, there's a lot of addition and multiplication. There aren't a lot of other functions that are being worked on. You're gonna have to find uh, a, a, an algorithm that maintains the function that you need for the particular type of operation that you want. And if you start trying to combine the functions, if you want to do addition plus comparison, the algorithms are going to be even more limited. Uh, again, you know, going back to the bad examples that I talked about at the beginning, the Caesar cipher has has very weak address space. I mean, you know, basically you can you know, break a Caesar cipher just by brute force every time. You've only got, you know, 26 uh, letters in the English alphabet, and if it was done in Latin, you only need 24. You know, it, it doesn't, uh, it's, uh, there's there's not a lot of stuff there that uh, um, you can work with. Um, so, uh, and, and the block mode, electronic code book, um, mode is is the weakest of the the block modes for block ciphers so we are going to be limited in the uh the algorithms we can use the algorithms are probably going to be subject to different types of attack uh simply because we have to maintain uh certain forms of of the data so you know, um, again, going back to the CSE guys, uh, the Holy Grail. Um, no, uh, there's there's going to be pro possible problems here. Um, 
Now, uh, CISSP question time. Which of the following is not an effective deterrent against a database inference attack? Now, why do I, I bring this up? Because, you know, we're, we're really talking about databases here. And a lot of these things are still, um, uh, you know, the, these attacks, like a database inference attack, um, we still don't, aren't able to address it with things like homomorphic encryption. Um, the homomorphic encryption uh, may not protect us against things like inference or or aggregation, uh, stuff like that. So, um, you know, again, uh, all the stuff that we do, partitioning, small query sets, uh, noise and perturbation is about the only thing we're gonna we're gonna do. And again, uh, next time, next you know, April twentieth, when we deal with um, Differential privacy. We're again uh, going to be looking at noise and perturbation and that sort of thing. Um, uh, cell suppression. A anyways, all all of those are uh, still not going to protect us against some of these attacks, um, even with homomorphic encryption. And by the way, the answer here is noise and perturbation, which I know is kind of strange. But um, another aspect of this. Homomorphic encryption isn't completely accurate in many cases. Um, we talk about um, addition and multiplication, but we may not get full accuracy and reliability out of the results from some of the uh, homomorphic encryption. Remember that the, the Google thing talked about limited addition. So uh, uh, Gentry's paper uh, talking about fully homomorphic encryption, and this is this is what uh, IBM is, is pushing, the idea of fully homomorphic encryption, talks about what you have to do in regard to the algorithms to ensure that the results are in fact accurate. So remember that when you look at anything, when somebody promises you something with homomorphic encryption, you are going to have to look at how reliable it is. What, you know, how good, how accurate are the results that are going to come out of this particular algorithm? So yet another weakness out of uh, homomorphic encryption. So Microsoft, yay Microsoft. I mean, you know, this is a Vanta. So uh, yay Microsoft. Microsoft is using homomorphic encryption. Uh, and of course they're using it to protect the passwords in Microsoft Edge. Well, no, it's not really homomorphic encryption. It's just password hashing again. And besides Google Chrome has been doing basically what Microsoft has is is promising in regard to homomorphic encryption for years. So, sorry. Um, anyways, so that is is basically it with uh, homomorphic encryption. So, fairly straightforward. Does anybody else have any questions? Good time to unmute yourself and say hello. Well, you made it seem pretty straightforward. I think well, hopefully. <laughs> I've been trying to, so hopefully I, I made it straightforward. I, I am always afraid, of course, that um, I have simply not explained anybody anything and, and everybody is just too confused to ask any questions, so. Oh, I asked no. a question and I'm confused. Oh, thank you very much, Vern. <laughs> yeah, some somebody did ask. Um, I actually, I'm I'm in the middle of a, a real string of presentations. Um, a week and a half ago, I gave this same presentation to B sides Dublin, and I'm doing it with you guys today. Um, Thursday, I'm presenting to 
uh, the ISC2 chapter in San Diego. And I'm going to be doing, they wanted a combination. So I'm going to be doing presenting technical evidence in court and security implications of quantum computing uh, for them on Thursday. And then Saturday, very early in the morning, Saturday, uh, I'm going to be speaking to the ISSA chapter in Colorado Springs. And what's that? Oh, yeah, that's that's the uh, part one of the security lessons from uh, COVID-19. So, uh, so <laughs> I've got this whole string of, of presentation. But anyways, uh, in in the Dublin uh, thing, somebody did ask the question, what are the applications it could be used for? Um, which uh, was interesting. I mean, you know, I've been trying to say, you know, what applications you want it for, what functions you want it for, uh, determines what algorithm you choose. Um, but I, I really am excited about the uh, the three ballot uh, system. I do think that that's uh, something that uh, you know uh, definitely could help and 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 uh, has some applications. I you know I would want to see some work on the implementation, um, but I it's you know that's that's exciting. Very cool, very cool. And it's neat that your calendar is full and you're getting lots of feedback too. Um, uh, we've been trying to get more people here, of course, to uh, try and enjoy this. Uh, glad to see new faces every time. Uh, thank you all for joining us. Uh, Rob, why don't you um, give us one quick plug on your book too? Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, um, yeah, I should have done that for the... Uh uh security lessons from from uh uh covid19 but yes um cyber security lessons from covid19 of course the publisher gets to choose the title uh so don't blame me for the cyber part but anyways uh cyber security lessons from covid19 um which i spent four months last year uh writing and and turned in the the manuscript at the end of August, and then they spent six months getting the thing into print, and they still haven't sent me my author copies. But apparently, it is out. Um, let me see. I'll, I'll get the uh, URLs for the. Where are we here? Um, yeah oh i might as well get all of this um basically uh there's a link for for amazon for the um uh for the book routledge which is the actual publisher and and again i've got my youtube channel uh in there so um perfect yeah but yeah uh cyber security lessons from covid19 um I hope it's good. I, I did. Uh, uh, Walt uh, did give me a nice uh, review. So if you go on Amazon, you can uh, uh, you can read his his review there, and he said nice things about it. So uh, yeah. cool. Well, uh, thank you very much, Robert. Um, does anybody else have any uh, questions or comments, heckles or anything? Okay. So April 20th. April 20th, definitely. Yep. Well, uh, we'll talk to you then. And uh, thank you all for joining. April 20th, we'll reconvene for our next session. And I don't have the list in front of me, but uh, tonight was homomorphic encryption. And what's the 20th, Rob? Uh, differential privacy. Hang on a second, and, I, and I'll uh, get that up again. And you might want to end the recording. Yeah, I will probably end the recording at some point, yes. So there's there it is, uh, VSS 6, Differential Privacy, April 20th, 7 p.m. Pacific. And uh, uh, all the URLs, the, the top one uh, to go to it, the uh, explanation of what it is, in the middle there and again the the videos down at the bottom and i put that on the 
the Slack channel as well. Um, Thank you. So yeah, it should should all be there. Excellent. Awesome. Appreciate that. And uh, we'll try and share that out and try and build more people to come on. Uh, thanks again, Rob. Uh, these are actually really good sessions and I wish we could get more people. I, I hope that our uh, recording viewing will go up as well. Yep. Take thanks again, on. Rob. Good, good to, uh, good to hear you. Yeah. Good to hear you too. And, and when I get, uh, vaccinated, we'll come out and look at your house. All righty then. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll be welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Um, James, is there anybody else on the Van Tug exec besides you and me on this chat at the moment? Um, I think it's you, me, and Rob. <laughs>